Milling Through History presents Galvanism. A recent meme which has been making the rounds on Facebook and other social media sites is one in which the creator of it says that Mary Shelley's Frankenstein is not a work of horror, but rather a work of science fiction. Now, this is a rather unique thing to point out because many uh, literary critics have pointed out that Frankenstein itself is a unique Gothic horror tale. Even the creation story itself of Frankenstein is where Mary Shelley had been dared to write a horror story. And in the middle of the night, while a lightning storm was occurring, she dreamt the story and then wrote it down as a contest. However, the unique aspect of Frankenstein, wherein the body parts of a person are sewn together and through the use of lightning is reanimated and brought back to life, is not something that would be actually considered science fiction at the time of the writing of the famed novel. In fact, it's science fact, and it's a rather unique one, as the principle that was being discussed in the book Frankenstein was that referred to as galvanism. Now, the scientific theory behind the principle of galvanism is that creating an electrical current through chemical action is what would allow body parts to move. Now, the term itself is named after Luigi Galvani, who believed he had discovered the existence of animal electricity, which gave life to organic matter. Now, popular theory dictates the discovery of how electricity affects muscle tissue was discovered by Galvani when his assistant accidentally touched a scalpel to the sciatic nerve of the frog they were experimenting with, and it resulted in the frog's legs moving. Now, ironically enough, the idea of electrical currents being used to move body parts was something that was not, that you know was brand new. In fact, this was something that was well established and known. But what Galvani was trying to do was to prove that lightning could also animate the legs of prepared frogs, namely the deceased ones. What he discovered was that not only did lightning do the same trick, but it could also be done through applying brass hooks to the spinal cord and using electrical currents through those hooks to create movement. Now, Galvani was successful in replicating his experiment through the use of metal electrodes and concluded that there was animal electricity, which was the electric power which animated all living things. Now, Galvani's achievement was a rather unique thing, and this ended up creating other scientists who wanted to mimic the same thing. Now, Galvani died in the year 1798, but his nephew, Giovanni Aldini, would continue his uncle's work, and in 1803, Aldini would use the electrostimulation technique to reanimate the limbs of George Foster, who was an executed criminal. According to newspapers at the time, the body of Foster began to move, including opening his eyes, raising his hand, clenching it, and moving his legs and thighs. Now, the discovery of galvanism itself would also end up going on into the medical field and is still being used to this day. Galvanism greatly influenced the creation of electroconvulsive therapy, electrocardiography, electromyography, and electrocorticography. But Galvanism itself, though, is forever immortalized thanks to the novel Frankenstein. Now, while Mary Shelley would certainly have been aware of Galvanism, it is believed that her husband Percy was the one who had helped to stimulate the idea by discussing his own reminiscences of James Lind who had been doing experiments using the principle of galvanism while Percy was in university. As such, while Mary Shelley would create the most notable version of galvanism in novel form, it is a scientific principle that had existed for nearly 40 years before the creation of the novel. And therefore, Frankenstein certainly is a gothic horror novel, but not that a science fiction. Rather, it is a novelization of scientific fact and something which, while we can certainly praise Shelley for creating such an amazing novel, is one that we should not mischaracterize as to what it is and, more importantly, what is it about. 
For more information, please consider these suggested titles. Be sure to click on the left-hand side of the screen to subscribe to our show, and on the right-hand side for our latest episode. And we will see you again for the next episode of Milling Through History.